a long time since the bones of a hobbit-like humanoid animal categories were tracked down on the Indonesian island of Flores, and as per one specialist, there might be more than old bones. In an exposition for the Scientist magazine, resigned ethnobiologist Gregory Forth portrays why he accepts Homo floresiensis, as they were considered by the popular late anthropologist Mike Morwood when he found the Pleistocene period bones on Flores in 2004 may in any case be fit as a fiddle in the timberlands of the island. Morwood's revelation of H. floresiensis shook the logical world when he previously announced his discoveries. In a way that would sound natural to Forth, it was commensurate to the revelation of a space outsider. This humanoid species, named the Hobbit by mainstream society, was dared to be terminated. Yet as Forth's subtleties in his impending book, Among Ape and Human, a nearby clan called the Leo have portrayed experiences with a little animal which he accepts might be very much the same as H. floresiensis. My point recorded as a hard copy the book was to track down the best clarification, that is, the most judicious and experimentally best upheld, of Leo records of the animals, fourth composed. These incorporate reports of sightings by in excess of 30 onlookers, every one of whom I talked with straightforwardly. Furthermore, I reason that the most effective way to make sense of everything they said to me is that a non-sapiens hominin has made due on Flores to the present or extremely late times. The ethnobiologist depicts how in Leo folklore, people can change into different species as a component of moving into new conditions and taking on better approaches for life, a legend, as per his portrayal of his hands-on work, which could propose an association among people and their H. floresiensis progenitors. However, he leaves the physiological subtleties of this purportedly uncontacted humanoid species to be perused in his book. Forth takes note of that the Leo public find, the gorilla man's appearance is something not completely human, which, by his assessment, is dangerous and upsetting to this native gathering. He likewise staggers onto an incrimination of human sciences overall, which numerous pundits have legitimately called out for its colonialist history a bigoted mischief. Scientists and other life researchers would do well to integrate such indigenous information into proceeding with examinations of hominin development in Indonesia and somewhere else, Forth wrote in The Scientist.